real quick video today, we're going to be taking a look at Tempo, uh, in a very specific instance in which Tempo manipulation will win or lose a game. So this is kind of like, a, <laughs> I can get to the point really quickly, so I'm just going to skip all this early gameplay part. It's not all that relevant. Uh, so I'm playing against Aridin, right? And I'm playing uh, the Spying Calviate deck. Uh, so one thing to note before that is, uh, so Calviate has a very strong tempo manipulation control like he he can do high tempo he can do low tempo he can do negative tempo he can do uh exceedingly positive tempo spies tibor his hero ability uh you know uh the emissaries he so he has i have a wide range of options to manipulate the strength advantage every turn uh usually it's not all that necessary to be cognizant of of it but in this particular instance i am and I don't know why this this video is skipping all. You know, I'm recording these using like plays.tv or whatever, like through, I don't know, my graphics card or something. It, it, but it's not working. I need to go back to OBS recording my games, which is kind of a pain, but whatever. Anyway, uh, so we get to this point, and uh, something you know about Aridin, right, is that he generally plays a. He generally plays a rather low tempo game, a uh, tempo game with uh, the, the four strength uh, Ice Hounds playing out the weather. The six strength uh, golems there, um, and then he uses his leader ability usually to catch up in tempo as as necessary, or maybe something like crones. I'm not actually all that certain. I don't really play up against or with Aridin all that much, but that's generally they kind of play like a lot of swarmy kind of minions and weather, not as much as Dagon, but anyway. So uh, as you can see here, I'm just kind of like stacking up these uh, these rod tossers. I'm playing out my imperial brigades, and. Uh, we're still we're staying pretty even. I'm one. He went first, I believe, so I'm one card ahead uh, at all times because I went second. And basically, I'm looking for that. I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm looking for that opportunity as uh, John Calvate, uh, spying Nilf guard, to take two card advantage if I'm going second because I have such strong uh, tempo control. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right here. I'm thinking, how do I? I want to like sail ahead of him in tempo, right? Because I have the raw touch on the field and I have a ton of spies, so I kind of want to pull out you know some kind of spying unit, right? So I go with Joaquim. Place him down, and also I'm prepping myself for a swipe. So the whole purpose of these like raw tossers only spies is to get more spies out from my impaired gates. Now that's a ginormous tempo advantage, right? And this is kind of the point I want to make. So I went from minus three to plus twenty three. So that's a twenty six strength gain uh, because of all these uh, options, all these like setups. I had all these spies. I had these impaired gates. I was ready to just sail ahead of him with this one really strong play uh, play in rain farm. So that's my super high tempo play. But throughout the entire game, I've just been keeping up in uh, slow tempo with Aerodin, right? Because I've been waiting for that opportunity to sail ahead. Uh, it's like this. And this isn't necessarily like, oh, I'm playing this five turns in advance. It's just kind of the way you play this deck in general. It's kind of uh, instinctual almost. So um, so he's been playing all these low tempo plays with uh, Frost and these, uh, these minions here. None of them are really giving him much tempo. I sail ahead of him with one big play. And now he has to decide, does he play... Uh, I think he plays a card here and then <laughs> and then he needs to decide if he wants to try and win the game with maybe uh, yeah see this stupid video skipping so he plays another low tempo play thinking I'm going to continue to play with it so what so this is the big point right here right so I was 23 points ahead and he goes for an extremely low tempo play in a wild hunt hound with the frost now if he was closer in tempo like with plus minus 10 or something like that that'd probably work because you're getting value over the long run and i don't necessarily want to bow out of the round that soon just like that and this is especially not ideal because he went first so any tempo play he, ne he needs to play is needs to be faster than what i'm doing or else i get into the situation in which i'm 24 points up and i can just pass on him even with this four hit on the weather I'm still plus 20 up. And what basically the only way he'd be able to win the game or win the round by this point is to play Crones. And that's even if he's running it. So we get to this point and I pass immediately. Yes. Like not only <laughs> not only am I uh, passing while I'm winning, just in general, I could be winning by one point and I'd still pass by this point. Because notice uh, again, four cards, five cards. I'm winning. He has to play at least one card. And going two cards up in nearly every situation. Uh, except for maybe like the very highest level of plays with very certain archetypes is almost always, you know, something you should do. It's, it's very, it's a 99% uh, absolute to always go two cards up if you can, or another 99% absolute is to go one card down to win around. 
but there's you know huge difference between those of course and of course you know you always want to try and win the round even card or one one card up you basically just win the game <laughs> so let's go to the situation here right so he needs to decide like does, does this guy even have a, a, a 17 tempo play it's a 17 because i lose four so i go down to 16 and he needs to have 17 to win so yeah he would need a 17 point play which is basically crone's and I'm trying to think of any other air. Oh, if he had a girl, he could take it in one card. But I, so I took that into account, right? I was thinking oh, if he has Crohn's, uh, I didn't necessarily think Igni, but uh, if he did have Igni or Scourge or something, I was still fully prepared to lose this round in a single card because I'm still two cards up. Uh, it doesn't matter if I'm winning by one card, uh, winning by one point, or if I'm winning by 20 points. Just taking that two card advantage will win me the game. <clears throat> And because, like I said earlier, uh, so it's not, oh, you don't, always, like I said before, you don't always want to lose the first round. Um, if there are certain decks that always want to win the first round, even if they go two cards down, because um, usually in that case, something like they're difficult to, they don't have very good tempo manipulation, like in round two. Uh, maybe they have too low tempo plays and they're just going to get too rounded, or maybe they are too, uh, they're too high tempo, like they, they just play super high tempo plays. Uh, but that's not the case with Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard, I can easily go, um, I can easily, you know, keep up with their tempo and not ever be in a less than ideal situation. True and Nerf are, uh, you know, fall back to that. But that's, you know, it's a video for another time. So basically by this point, uh, <laughs> I, I go back, I go, I go and get a drink, I come back. He's still kind of thinking this out because I, I'm pretty sure he's uh, feared out that he's lost here, right? So he plays this. It's still really low tempo play. And honestly, it, he actually would have been in a pretty good spot if he had gone two cards down, but then had all this carryover. If he was, if he wasn't so far behind the tempo, so that's the kind of that's kind of the great thing uh, about Rainfarn into this Imperic Brigade setup. Um, if he had the necessary tempo to pass me in two cards, but still have all his carryover, it's as if he only went one card down. And that's kind of like the that's why like why Dagon is so strong right now. It's because of the massive amount of carryover and to a certain extent Aerodin. I don't see a lot of Aerodin, but that's kind of the thing. And if he wanted to, <laughs> um, he could go three cards down, but the game's just over. And going back a little bit, uh, so it was like three cards to four cards, right? And he just surrendered after that. So let's take it from the situation, right? If he passes here, he still loses. He 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 lost the game based on my one play, his my his his non tempo aggressive play and my super aggressive tempo play. That like disparity, that single play lost him the game because if he passes right now at four car four cards to five, even though he has carryover in these two golems right here, it doesn't matter. I can just play him out and bleed him out in round two and then take a round three. Um, and even then, I'd still be one card up. So. By winning the game, winning the round with one card up is just it. You lose the game in most cases. Uh, winning the round two cards down is still not a very ideal situation. That's a pretty terrible situation to be in. So he just lost the game off this one decision because of the knowing the tempo disparity, like knowing he has all these super low tempo plays and then playing Raid Farn. So that's kind of the idea. Knowing your your tempo uh, manipulation ability to force card advantage, basically. And that can be summed up a little bit more, you know, easily. But I like to take these like actual examples that I see in the game and then kind of make sense of it that way. And then later I can just kind of like screenshot this and really sum it up in a sentence or two. But it feels good to talk this stuff out. Anyway, so that's it. Tempo advantage, force card advantage to win the game. Thanks for watching. <laughs>